<laughs> Is this thing on? Welcome back to another episode of Spooled Life Live. I'm your host, Ram Garcia. And guess what? It's 2022, and we're in beautiful Corpus Christi, Texas. Home of Corpus Christi. Home of uh, Selena, the Selena statue. We got Whataburger. Who else we got? Who else did you pass town, on your way over? You know, yeah. <laughs> right? We passed Robstown, Barrera's Fried Chicken. That's, the, that's another good uh, historical marker. But I got a hell of a show for y'all to start the 2022 Spooled Life Live season. We got none other than Mr. Dana Wise from... Uh, well, the Laguna Madre, Lower Laguna Madre lower area. Laguna I Madre. actually live in Laguna Vista, but the whole South Padre Island, Port Isabel, Lower Laguna Madre area, we kind of lump right. ourselves together. Right. Well, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show. I hey, appreciate the offer. Always good to get up to Corpus. Right. One of the one of the things that we see a lot is the whole taking pictures of fish stuff. Right. Right. I'm trying to get my my phone on. Here we go. One, one, one of the things we see a lot is, is everybody wants to take a selfie of a fish. Everybody wants to showcase their, their catches, their memorable catches. But you do this stuff like for real. Well, right? at the professional level, we'll call it, right? Well, I get paid, so technically I guess it's professional. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's, um, it's, it's something that I did because I love it, but right. it is nice to get, get, get paid for it as well. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up on the upper Texas coast, okay. um, grew up fishing primarily East Matagorda Bay, the Colorado River, some of West Matagorda Bay, that area. Moved to uh, South Padre Island in 1995, and that same year is when I began my career as an outdoor writer. So since that time, I've lived in the lower Laguna Madre area, uh, guiding, writing, doing photography in that area, but because of writing and photography, I have you know the good fortune to be able to fish up and down the texas coast um all of the different bays as right. i go on story and photo assignments so um really been fortunate these last 20 some odd years to uh, get to fish with a lot of really talented anglers and guides and uh see pretty much every every mm -hmm. mile of the texas coast right but you're not your typical if i'm taking a picture of a, of a fish i caught you know i'm on the kayak most of the time mm -hmm. you know and, and i have camera booms spread out along the kayak but you are you get in the water you're yeah i spent a lot of time in the water or under there, the right? water I, I that's something that it's relatively new say in the last three to four years for me mm -hmm. uh but absolutely in love love it um had worked previously some years ago doing uh snorkel trips scuba trips things like that oh, so wow. i had some experience in the water prior uh but combining the photography and being in the water with it is is what I absolutely right. love. So when we get an opportunity to get me in the water to get these to get these shots, that's what I live for. Right. Unless it's winter time. I've done it then. It's not always <laughs> pleasant, but uh, uh, but you know whatever it takes. Right. Did you uh you you mentioned the Lower Laguna mm -hmm. Madre, right? Is that the that's where you started? That that's where you fished when you were younger and stuff no where i grew up up in uh, the upper coast so i grew up fishing east matagorda bay primarily okay um and then like so the colorado river where it feeds in there west matagorda bay i started coming down to the lower laguna madre both port mansfield and south padre island back in the early 90s i get or yeah early 90s and ended up moving there in 95 okay and so been there ever since Guys, if y'all are just tuning in, somebody give me a brown thumbs up. If y'all don't hear an echo, y'all see us good, y'all hear us good, y'all's favorite beverage is going down good, give me a thumbs up. We got a bunch of good stuff. We got a hell of a guest. We got some giveaways. We got some stuff that's almost out, right? Right. Uh, of the shelves. We got a couple thumbs up. We got a white one and a brown one, so we're good. <laughs> All right. Why the outdoors? Well, I grew up in a really small town, and pretty much on the photography had, side. On of the stuff, side, I can say, well, that's well, it kind of ties together. I grew up hunting and fishing, mm -hmm. and when I got into writing, 
um, it was natural just to to get into that outdoor writing field. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't start as a photographer. I oh, started really? as a writer. Right. And so my photography career began as an offshoot of that. Um, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to where when I entered the writing profession, magazines would buy articles from writers and photogra- photos from photographers. Oh. It's not long after I got in there, it started to transition where they wanted a package. They wanted you to provide everything. Right. The photos, the story, everything. So I had to learn how to take. I mean, I had taken photos like most people in the water when you catch a fish, mm-hmm. you, you know, you want to take it. Um, but I got an old Canon 81, started clicking around. And honestly, for the majority of that time, uh, probably 10, 15 years, I took just basically your typical grip and grin shots. Uh, you know, I got a little bored with it. Um, I have a little background in art. I'd actually majored in art for two years in college and do some illustration work and stuff like that. And so I started thinking, you know, maybe I ought to tie these two together. And so it's only been the type of photography that most people liken with me or that, that relate me to really only evolved about five or six years ago when I, when I just got bored of uh, taking the same old stuff. And I said, you know, I'm going to start trying something different. Um, at the time, I didn't even know if the magazines would run them. Um, lucky enough, enough people liked them. They kept using them, kept buying them, and uh, it's what, allowed me to be more and more creative. What magazines were out at that time? Like at, your Texas, Texas well, Outdoor? Texas magazine, Outdoors so? Journal, I've been on staff with them for, oh, God, about 20 years. Okay. And, and actually, at the, at the beginning, at the outset of when I um, started having to do the photo work with um, the writing work, there was a lot more in print magazines mm-hmm. than what you have today. Uh, you know, a lot of good ones like the old monthly Shallow Water Angler have since gone away. I know they do it now as an annual, but that used to be a monthly that okay. covered the whole Gulf Coast, things like that. So a lot of those magazines are no longer in, in publication, or at least not to the extent they were. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you've seen an evolution with some of the magazines such as American Fly Fishing, okay. uh, who I do some work with that really go heavy onto creative photography. Uh, Tail Fly Fishing Magazine is another one that's come out that really goes heavy into a more creative aspect of fishing these, photography. These are paperback? Those are in print magazines, okay. correct. Because I'm, I'm sure a lot of them have gone into like the media, digital. Yeah, there's a lot of magazine digital stuff. magazines out there. And, you know, most of the print magazines do have a digital version. And then there's a lot of digital platforms. Um, that I do work with as well that are just purely digital. Mm -hmm. Uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife is another great magazine that's always had great photography in it for both hunting, fishing, and other outdoor activities here in Texas. How do you compete with other? With, with, uh, especially nowadays where everybody wants to, you know, you pick up a camera, you have like GoPro cameras. Right. When, when, I don't know, right? I don't know how old you are, but when you first started was, there wasn't, well, there wasn't much of like a GoPro action camera, right? You know, it, it no, it's certainly not a GoPro. Um, and, you know, it's kind of funny. With, you know, there's two ways to look at that question. You know, as far as competing with other photographers, you know, as far as me, you know, I've never considered myself a good photographer. I'm friends with some amazing photographers, and those guys are, are way more technically savvy and sound than I am. You know, I'm just out there clicking a button and, mm-hmm. and shooting what I see. Um, so these guys are, are far beyond me as far as their technical capabilities with photography. But that also kind of goes with your, your question there is that the advent of more modern technology and photography has, has allowed everyone to take a lot better photos than they could before. So that also is one of the reasons why I try to find different angles uh, right. to try to get myself in the water with the fish and try to shoot things that just look more natural and, and you know probably the highest compliment I ever get as far as my photos go is when people will tell me you know it just that's what I was seeing when I was on the water it feels like I'm out there mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to something that's staged and looks artificial right so that's really as far as that goes now on the flip side of that is I remember when writers had to start taking photos the full-time photographers weren't pleased with it um, and you oh, see okay. that today too because with social media with the digital platforms and with people's ability to capture a pretty good there's a lot of people that aren't photographers that get some pretty good images 
uh, and they'll push them out there through social media or even sometimes get them picked up in a print mag. The difference there is being able to do it consistently and having, you know, enough photos to sustain you. You know, getting one here and there is not going to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, the sheer volume of quality photos that you have to come up with um, in order to make a living out of it is much more than what people realize. And so there is a lot of pressure, believe it or not. I mean, people see me fish with me, uh, shoot with me on the water. They may not think the pressure's there. Right. Um, which is one of the reasons I, there's a kind of a core of, of guys and gals I like to shoot with because they know how to get it done. Right. And it makes my job easy. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a big difference between taking a good shot because you happen to have that opportunity and having to go out there and fill a fill a need and get photos to run with an article or get photos mm -hmm. to fill an assignment there's a couple companies my company of choice is railblazer they they created a it's called a camera boom camera boom 600 or pretty much takes the camera two feet away from you right. that way you could get it what would what were y'all doing let's just say you're by yourself right what's a trick of the trade you would do would it be like a broomstick or something? Or? Well, you know what? I'm, one, I don't appear in very many photos. Okay. I'm usually taking You're just them. the guy behind the camera. I'm the guy behind the camera. Um, a lot of people I fish with have, you know, they utilize a timer on their phone, the timer on their GoPro. Right. Uh, even like my Canons, you know, you have a remote shutter function that you, you know, even if you just set it up on your console, you can take mm -hmm. pictures of it. Um, but that's really... Because I do a lot of solo trips, just I enjoy fishing by myself a lot. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I began doing was a lot of ma macro photography. Well, I'm not actually in the photo, but you're going to see just like the fish's tail. Oh yeah. Or you know, it's fin silhouetted against. Kind of like a the, tail in Tuesday, what you call yeah, it. Exactly, right? and the tail Tuesday started from that, and uh, you know, a lot of times I may do like a dorsal fin silhouetted against the sunrise or right. sunset, or just a head shape, you know, or just the eye. Uh, and a lot of that really evolved for me fishing by myself and catching a good fish. And, oh, what the hell do I do with it now? I can't, right. <laughs> can't take a photo of myself. So, um, but there are ways, like you said, there's there's things that you can put the sticks. Uh, a lot of people will mount, and I have mounts on my boat too, where I can mount a camera or a GoPro on okay. the railing. Uh, and you can put it on a timer, or you can use a remote shutter mm -hmm. uh, and get yourself in the shot if you like. Right. When, when I've hired photographers, not that I hire photographers for my fishing stuff, but when I've hired them for like my wedding, you know what I mean? For quinceaneras, what other um, birthday parties, right? They always say, well, let's try to schedule something in the magic hour, right? right. What is the what what is the magic hour? Well, you'll hear the Especially golden the hour, water, right? right? You'll hear it called the golden hour, the there magic hour. Right. Um, basically, what you're talking about there is it's going to change throughout the seasons and throughout the year. Um, but what they're referring to there is just a time period where you have soft light. Low, and you're bright enough to get full exposure, but soft enough to where it doesn't wash everything out. You still okay. see all of the features. You still see all the crispness, crispness of the mm -hmm. colors. Um, and so it's, it's that kind of that period leading up to sunset is typically when you're going to see okay. it. And, and it does, the, the photos look so much better. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to when you get that real harsh light, particularly like in the middle of summer in August, if you're taking a photo in the middle of the day, it's really hard to capture that with any depth and any crispness to the colors um, just because the lighting is so harsh. Right. Um, in fall, you have a little bit softer light throughout the, the day. Uh, but when you hear golden hour, when you hear magic hour, they're typically talking about that last hour or two uh, of the day before the sun sets when you still have enough light to get full exposure but soft enough light to give you a really cool when y'all are on the water somebody catches a fish or you like okay let's give me my camera or and eh, you know what let's wait let's wait a couple hours you know on that well put them in the live well let's wait one of the um one of the things about fishing with me and it's another reason why there's really a core group i mean i fish with a lot of guides a lot of writers but there when it comes to i have an assignment i need to get things done there's a there's a core group of anglers and guides that i call upon um the one they're good at what they do and so i know we're going to get to fish because that's step right. one right if we don't yeah. get to fish that's the most important then <laughs> nothing else matters mm -hmm. uh, so we got to do that and preferably we do it at a, at a period of time early in the day 
or late in the day where we have that optimum light. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing is you get a lot of people that approach you and say, man, you know, I want photos like this. I had this had or the other. I'd really like to see, you know, get these photos. Can we go? The reality is I kind of liken it to everybody that says they want to catch big trout and they throw a, you know, go out and throw a topwater slow sinking plug for 30 minutes, don't get a bite, and they're, they're off of you, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. When it comes when it comes to getting quality fish picks, you got to spend time with that fish when you catch it. We get what we call a photo fish, and we kind of have these parameters in our head, whether it be a redfish, trout, whatever species it is, that we know that fish is going to look good in photos. It doesn't have to be a trophy, but it has to to make the cut as far as being large enough. Fish typically tend to not look as good till they get to a certain age and certain right. size, right? Um, we get that fish you're gonna miss some casting opportunities because we're gonna shut everything down and take time photoing that fish till we get what we need right a lot of people don't realize how much time that is Mm -hmm. uh and and part of that particularly with trout it it becomes um a little kind of multi-layered in that you also have to keep the fish alive so we'll stop Give the fish a rest, revive right. it a little bit, and then get going. You want it to be all stiff and shit. Right, and then we want to be able to release them, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it really takes a lot of time. So a lot of people get impatient and they just want to go back to casting. Right. Because you're gonna you're gonna go through. Sometimes you lose the rest of the bite. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're on them. You exactly. Know? So yeah. you get on, and then you you know they don't, just don't want to take the time, and so that's really the most critical thing is is taking the time with the fish to make sure you got what you need Mm -hmm. and and not everybody has the patience to do that right or the uh, patience to put up with me that long the the core group that you fish with Mm -hmm. i know i've i've talked about it with other with other guests do you when they're in the water they have the fish they caught are you like man let's let's you know let's get over here a little bit you know we have a windmill in the background or you know, we have a it, it depends. tower it, in the background or something. We, you know, we're part of that is before we start casting, setting up, not to say we call our shot, but we want to, we kind of want to catch the fish in a certain vicinity mm-hmm. with what we want the photo to look like in mind. Right. Um, you know, and that, there again, it feeds into that same thing. We may know there's a hot bite in some other area, but that's not. The, the scenery not the background not the water that we're looking for mm-hmm. um so part of the setup goes before you even start casting to make you be in the area you right. want and then once that happens that you get to fish of course you can never predict exactly when that's going to be so the sun angle's changing constantly as the day's going on so immediately once we know we got a fish actually if, if you see what what we do <clears throat> when the fish is hooked um if we know then it's going to be a good one, I'm already out with my cameras. I mean, I'm fairly efficient after all these years, so I've already got my camera stuff laid out. Mm-hmm. And again, the the ones that I really fish with a lot that really know what they're doing, they know to drill too. And so, while the while the anglers fighting the fish, I'm already kind of looking for sun angles, looking for backdrops, looking at where. So as once the fish is netted, it's in the boat. We stake down or whatever we're going to do. I already know where I need to enter the water, where, what angle do we need to shoot at, and they do too. We've been talking through it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we make it, you know, not to sound like we're actually good at what we do, but we've done it a lot, yeah, and it right. works out for us. So it's a we, little system, y'all. Yeah, already. we have a little system right. in place, and we and, and that makes it easy. And then, like I said, I do shoot with a lot of other people, and, and I can personally tell the difference even when we get good shots mm-hmm. as opposed to when I'm shooting with somebody that's, that's kind of – accustomed to the way we do it and and we have uh you know kind of a a system in place that that we like to use Mm -hmm. do you uh travel outside the laguna oh yeah florida fresh and salt water actually i have assignments that i go all over the place and uh you know i was just up here um cut well over the last month i've been up here fishing twice doing photo shoots with uh captain joey fair one of my long time friends and corpus right yeah corpus we fish baffin and, and he's one that knows the drill joey's great at it and um whenever i'm up here definitely look him up and fish with him um but yeah i get to fish up and up and down the coastal bend a lot uh, and also up all the way up to sabine and in galveston okay. as well as uh, like i said a, a number of texas lakes anything out of the country or anything 
as far as going on shoots out of the country, no, not as of yet. That's definitely in the plans, right. but uh, but so far, no. I know a lot of those guys, like in uh, Costa Rica, Panama, mm -hmm. catching sailfish, rooster fish. That's yeah, cool, the rooster man. fish interests me a lot more than the sailfish. Oh, really? You know, yeah, we've got good sailfish down in South Padre, but even then, I'm more of an inshore guy. But the rooster fish is definitely one right. I'd like to photograph. Right. I know Brian Barrera. Oh yeah, you Brian, know, real good friend of mine. Right. He gets into the tarpons. That that's that's one of the I guess the fish you want to catch when you're down down there, right? Yeah, and that's, you know what, and that's, uh, when we talk about guys that know to drill, um, there's nobody that I work with better than Brian. Oh, really? Uh, Captain Mike Ball and Captain Brian Bonetta are two guys that I fished with forever, work with for, well, actually Mike fished with forever. Brian and I have only fished together in the last, ooh, four or five years maybe, but that that's a guy that can one produce fish right and when you talk about tarpon uh you know i'm really loath to say that somebody's the best at something because everybody has strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and you know especially in short guides um but you know i just had this conversation with a magazine publisher the other day that you know if we were keeping stats like next gen st stats in nfl i don't think you'd ever see a season for texas tarpon like brian just had this year mm -hmm. um and he's as good as I've ever seen when it comes to tarpon and snook. Right. Uh, he's an all-around guide. And when, but when it comes to that, he can produce them. We're talking to each other the whole time the fish fight's going on about what comes next. That way there's no surprises right. when the fish is to the boat. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite photos from this year is uh, Brian doing a face grab on a tarpon that was, you know, probably around 130, 135 pounds. Oh, wow. Because uh, there is even Was it a, that one that, that we posted? On the fly, yeah, that one, yeah, yeah, that was that was one that I I really liked that photo, um, and even though tarpon, <clears throat> tarpon are kind of subtle in their coloration. They're silver with a green back, right? But when you really get the right light on them, each of those scales is so prismatic. Uh, there's really not a prettier fish, and they have such distinctive features with that jawline and with right. the scales and with the with the gill plates and the big eye. Uh, that is one of my favorite fish to photograph. Um, fun fish to catch. Mm -hmm. And we've got a fishery that would rival anywhere in North America. Right. Um, and, yeah, when it when it comes to tarpon fishing, it, that's one of those things that, you know, and Brian's one of the guys I've, I've watched. He's younger than me, but I've watched him grow these last few years as a guide, and it's, it's really been cool to see. He's always been a good guide, but man, these last couple of years, he's he's elevated himself. And it's one of those deals that he's on the water all the time. But he's a guy, he calls me and says, hey, man, I just ran a trip this morning. I'm going in an hour. You know, I drop what I'm doing and I go. Because every time we fish together, there's a chance. This is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good yeah. one. And, and more often than not, it is. Right. So, yeah, I always appreciate uh, the help I get with uh from brian because it we get quality fish we get good shots right uh and the other thing when you're talking about fish uh and photos of fish and that's one thing brian's really good at mike's really good at you know a lot of times people say oh they only want models or they no i actually want somebody that looks comfortable right and even a lot of really good anglers i'm not real comfortable looking in front of a camera i'm not a real good angler either but i'm not real good comfortable looking in front of the camera i like to take shots of the people that just look natural mm -hmm. um it doesn't look forced it doesn't look posed right and they can do it quickly and and so that's another the people that i like to shoot with a lot it's that because you take you end up taking hundreds of photos in a day on the water mm -hmm. there's certain people i fish with that I, there's going to be a high hit rate on those you know I start going through and I'm like, man, they're all good, you know? And then there's other times you shoot and it's, there's just something. The fish looks good, but it's a weird right. look on their face. Their eyes what, are closed. What, what are some of the things you look for? Like, I know when I have, what I usually do when I'm on the water is I'll hit the GoPro, I'll hit the play button, you know, I'll catch a fish, I'll, I'll get in front of the camera for a little bit, you know, different different angles. And then I'll go to the house, you know, and then I'll hit that play button. I'll be like, all right, I'll pause it, right? 
Every once in a while, my GoPro will act up, and it just took a thousand pictures instead of video, right. video, right? And I'll go through every one of them, you know. I'll go, man, oh, I like all of these, you know. Which one do I post? Well, there's there's something to that. A couple of things. A lot of people, for social media purposes, stuff will use video stills, which that works in that for that platform, but it doesn't work in print. It's not going to be high enough resolution. So we're having to take still shots now. We shoot burst and stuff sometimes, particularly like if we're doing a lift shot or something like that. But that does become a problem sometimes where there's, you know, you're looking at photo after photo and they look very, very similar. Right. It's just a slight, uh -huh. slight difference in maybe the expression or the amount of drip coming. And, right. and sometimes, yeah, it actually gets, and there's, there's other people that I call on and I may shoot them a couple of images and say, tell me, man, which one looks best? I just can't mm -hmm. figure it out. Uh, because sometimes they, there are a series that just they're very close together and it's really hard to distinguish and there's been sometimes even after i submit them i thought damn did i picked the right one right um and so and then of course the lighting is always key mm -hmm. but those are those are some of the things but the main thing is just looking natural and um a lot of times people ask you know what what can i do to you know take better photos of fish or, or this right. or the other and and I mean, don't get me wrong. I I have a rudimentary understanding of photography and cameras. As you know, I do understand the process. But from a technical aspect, when you look at guys like Eric Schlegel and and um, you know Mark Kano and even y'all's old outdoor writer here, David Sykes, yep. that outstanding photographer, uh, Kendall Larson, these guys, uh, Tosh Brown used to be a photographer up here. Um, these guys are professionally trained photographers that know every technical aspect of it but you don't necessarily have to do that to improve your photography you, you need to know enough about it uh and i'll never know what those guys do even though i've learned a lot from shooting with them um but some there's some simple things like one of the biggest things that i tell people if you want a better fish picture look at the fish you know a lot of times to me one of the most unnatural things is somebody's holding a fish and they're looking at the camera so if you're fishing and you're not taking if you get a fo good fish you're most likely looking at the fish and so when it comes to just take capturing a, like natural, a more natural prep. yeah just something that looks natural as if we're out yeah. fishing you know if you and i are out fishing without a camera and you catch a fish are you going to be looking at me like this right with the fish or are you yeah. going to be looking at the fish yeah. and so simple things like that just trying to look at the fish um and shoot them when they're alive right even if you're catching some to keep and eat they always look better alive right so don't wait till you get back to the dock and they're stiff mm -hmm. and they're shrunk and you're they're taking a picture of an open ice chest yes exactly right. i mean even, then if you take a picture of yourself looking at the camera then you got to worry about if you're smiling all right right exactly you know, do i look skinny you know what i mean <laughs> yeah how Getting does, the right does my waist look right, right here, you know what I mean? Or do, is my double chin showing? My wife is always saying, man, look up, you know? <laughs> I'm always looking down my double chin. I think I inherit it from my dad, my double chin, but hopefully he's not watching. But, uh, you know, there's a whole, just a bunch of other obstacles if you do it. But if you do that natural, right. you know, fighting the fish, you know, the rod's bent, something like that, you know? Well, the action shots, action shots and lifestyle shots are, are something I really like to do as well. So a lot of times when we're out fishing, um, you know, I set the rods down for a while and I'm just kind of shooting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not having people put, just taking photos as they're going through their business. I love candid shots, uh, whether, whether it's the equipment, whether it's the fishermen. Um, because those obviously always come out natural, but that's one thing right. I think that people overlook when they're they're taking photos of their fishing trip, is the action shots, uh, the, the for lack of a better term, the lifestyle shots. You know, the equipment on the boat and things like that that kind of all pull the whole trip together. Because it, the whole trip didn't just entail that fish mm -hmm. and, and it being in your hands. You know, so the photos of fighting it and landing it and and things like that so you're kind of complimented when you go on this trip when brian calls you he says man dude they got an hour you know can you get here in 30 minutes yeah i'm on my way dude and you oh, yeah. get there you got your camera in hand you're not casting or or <clears throat> it depends um so the cameras are always accessible <clears throat> they're ready yeah so as soon as we stop i have everything open up i'm ready to go i can quick grab if needed if we start getting to the point where we're getting takes, we're getting this, then yeah, I'm just camera in hand, 
see what's going on. Right. Now, there's other times, you know, you've fished enough to know. There's times you're grinding it out, and then we need every hook in the water right. to, to try to get, get a fish. And mm -hmm. so I'm just fishing right along with everybody else. Right. Uh, but even then, the camera's always. And so every time we move, that's part of it, too, when you're having to, to put up with having me on the boat. We get ready to move. It's like, oh, hold on. It's not just crank it up and go. Mm -hmm. I got to get all my stuff stowed. Yeah. And then we run, and even if we're just running to reset a drift, I still got to put everything back away. Right. And then get it all back out. You don't want it to get wet, that. all that stuff. Right. Fly so, off the boat. Or... Yeah, just don't need it bouncing around on the bottom of the boat for right. sure. So that, but that too is something that just kind of kind of becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as we stop to drift, camera bags out, open. Cameras are pointed at a place where I can grab them real quick and right. easy. We, uh, you talked about lighting a while ago. There's this thing, I don't even know what I'm, I'm gonna call it, a, like a light filter, mm -hmm. right? You plug it in, it's got like a screen on it, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. You don't have one of those, right? So when the sun is not there, you're on an evening <clears throat> trip. Are you like, man, let's, you know, let, let's, I'm just not gonna take no pictures, you know? Or, or no, no, like no, that. no, that's never an option. Um, so, the light, one, the light's got to get really, really low before before we're able to not photo. Um, and I'm not the best, again, technically with with lighting and photography, but I can I can get by. Uh, I have some some. Of course, everybody has flash and fill flash, right. and and we've got you know external flash that we use. If but I I don't prefer I don't like using a flash if if necessary. I do have some small lights that I can okay. set down and, and depending on where we're at, what the angle is to kind of illuminate different mm -hmm. parts of the fish or of the person or, or the whole scene. Right. Um, and so there are times where we got to bring a little bit of artificial lighting okay. in to help. So it's, you don't just base it off the sun. That's hundred percent, right? Not a hundred percent, but that's what we try to get done. Okay. And then there are times, yeah, we're just, you know, if, if we're just out shooting to fill stock, yeah, this time, okay, it's the, the day's done. Mm -hmm. Our light's gone. Right. Uh, but if we're if we're out there needing to get shots and we hadn't got it done, then we've got the external lighting and stuff to try to try to enhance mm -hmm. what we need. Cool. If, if y'all have any questions for Mr. Wise, photography based questions, um, outdoor questions, when is the best time to catch tarpon? Right. When is the best time to catch snook? But you're a guide as well, right? I, I've been guiding. I don't guide much now. I'll do a few. You're more ways, towards the photography, way outdoor more, writing. Yeah, stuff. I used to be full time guide and writer and photographer, but I really scaled way back on the guiding. I take a trip here and there, but but primarily focusing on the writing and photography. Uh -huh. Lower Laguna. For guiding, exclusively Lower Laguna. Okay. Um, Austin Matthews, which was one of our winners last show. He asked, and, the, and this is, uh, I hope this isn't one of those, uh, what do you call those, baited questions, but <laughs> has he ever staged a particular lure different from the lure that caught the fish in the fish's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, there's a lot of times I don't, I personally prefer to make sure we take shots without a lure. Okay. Um, but there's... Again, it goes to setting up the shot before you're there. Just like you're asking me about the background. Right. What if we need a particular lure in the shot? Well, then we need to have them tied on. Right. Um, otherwise, a lot of times the lure is not really the focal point of the shot. They may have a lure in there. So if I'm going to get um, a shot for a magazine assignment, Oftentimes it doesn't really matter what lures in there, or if we want to, if we're talking about soft plastics, well, okay, whatever, what soft plastic do we catch it on? That's what's hanging in its mouth. Mm -hmm. um, if there is, for whatever reason, you need to have shots of a particular lure, then that's what you need to, that's what you need to throw. Um, and I, I tell you, you know, we we brought we were talking just before the show about um, Mark Nichols, owner of DOA, and that is one of he is adamant about not sticking a lure that didn't catch that fish. If it's one of his lures, if it didn't catch the fish, he doesn't want it in his mouth in a photo. Right. Um, he is very adamant about that. Mm -hmm. Is that has there ever been a situation where you 
yes, you did catch it on that lure, but you just don't have that angle. So I'm going to take the lure out. Oh, without so a doubt. Yeah. Would, oh, yeah, without a doubt. Sometimes they got that thing deep. Right. Sometimes the first thing we've got to do is remove everything to clean the fish up. Right. You don't want to have a whole bunch of blood all yeah, over. Yeah, or he hit the bottom of the boat. He's, you know, we got to rinse him off, and then you just put it back in. But mm -hmm. I, I see no ethical issue with that. Right. Um, you know, that you caught, you caught a fish on a DOA shrimp, and it was up where you didn't see anything but a line going in. You wiggle it around, and it comes out later. Or like right. I said, and sometimes we'll pop it all the way off the hook, rinse the fish, clean him up, re, you know, put the lure back in if we right. want the lure in the shot, and then take yeah. those shots. But that's it's not really to me that's not staging that's just trying to get a quality shot right austin austin uh says it was a baited question but not a baited question <laughs> <laughs> jonathan welcome to the show man jason parker i'm still waiting on that message man you're supposed to call me about the i got something big coming up guys i'm hoping it's a hit i'm not sure we're still gonna do it because we just do whatever the hell we want over here it's full life life so me and Jason Parker are actually working on something. We can't say much, but it's going to be at some point here at the beginning of the year, hopefully. So I want to say a couple of days ago, we had a giveaway. I, I posted up a giveaway. I usually do it about two weeks to a week ahead of the shows coming up. But I felt like a lot of people weren't getting the chance to win, right? So what I did was I said, you know what? I'm going to do this, this giveaway late, right? We did it. I believe it was Thursday. It might have been Wednesday. It might have even been Friday. I don't remember. But it was a, it was definitely not a week, two weeks. So the it was called the Die Hard Loot. It was for the diehards of the group that are uh, cruising into the group and checking out what we got, right? I'm not even sure how to if there's like a notification i know on instagram you could hit that notification thing and you get all the the posts that somebody's doing i'm not sure if there's something like that on facebook but if there is hit that notification button but nonetheless we did do a giveaway loot and we had almost i want to say like 50 something comments right to be fair guys you must be a member to win Right. We had a, we had at least five to six people that were not members. I didn't put your name in, in the loot. Right. Got to be a member to win. You got to be a member to participate in the best podcast that Corpus Christi has to offer. Right. So we're already 39 minutes deep. We're going to pick a winner. My oh, man, Mr. Wise is going to pick a winner. From this hat right here. Right. All y'all's names is in this uh in this real sportswear cap and we got them all right here one winner is gonna win for everybody that jumped in thank you for jumping in everybody that's inviting their their uh tias and feels and cousins thank you all for that as well you know we do this to grow our group right everybody that uh that invites people and tags their buddies and stuff you know, hopefully y'all are tagging some people that aren't part of the group, right? If y'all are, then it's okay. You know, it's okay too. So one person's going to win the uh, the Die Hard loot tonight. And we got another special surprise for the viewers that are still on. So one person, Mr. Weiss, anybody. The one person that's going to win the diehard loot is none other than mr colby stelling colby stelling you are the winner man of the diehard loot if you weren't diehard you're diehard now so slide into my dms i'll slide into yours we'll get this out i believe you're local you're elite. you're somewhere around here corpus corpus christi area and we'll get it sent out to you man congratulations for winning the Die Hard League. So let's talk now. Let's talk tactics in camera setups. We we, we spoke about it briefly while on the uh, on the water. When when you get on the water, right? 
and I, I keep on talking about what I do as a kayak fisherman, you mm -hmm. know, but my cameras are always in place. You right. know, they're, they're always stationed there. When I get on the water, I do have different angles I can choose from, but first thing in the morning, okay, I want this front angle. I don't mess with it at all. Okay, right. first thing in the morning, I want this back angle. I leave it there, right? I do have the option to go back there and change it, but I don't want to, you know? When you jump on the water, and I keep on mentioning Brian's name, right? Because he's the only one I know from down there. But <laughs> Brian's hauling ass down the intercoast or, or the waterways y'all have. What, what, what are you thinking? Okay, I got to get my camera out. What lens do I got to do? Or do you have them all set up? And no, I already know what lenses. Um, the, well, one, I have multiple cameras with me. It's, um, are they all Canon or? Yeah, all Canon. All Canon. Um, that's your camera of choice, Canon? It is. Uh, that's what I started with. And, and over time, what happens is you buy lenses that, you know, you want bodies that fit those lenses. Oh, okay. So you just, it kind of perpetuates, right? right. Um, <clears throat> but in general, I've always been happy with Canon and, and just have stuck with it. This might be a dumb question, but you can't put like an Olympus lens no. on a Canon camera. You have to have. Right. And even okay. within that, it, it gets into, you know, different models of of each brand will sit oh, really? different models of each oh, lens. Okay. Yeah, so you end up kind of, once you've invested in all these lenses, you start kind of trying to find, you know, it's reinvest in bodies, you're wanting the ones that match up, et cetera. But I always have something with a wide angle lens, number one. That okay. way, we're if we're uptight to each other, which you often are in a boat, mm -hmm. you know, so if I was only gonna have one, it's gonna be a, a short wide angle lens that I can that I can use in, in close quarters. Right. Uh, so that's always on one of the cameras, and then I always like something versatile that I can get a little more reach out of. Um, but of course, no lens does everything, and so depending on the type of shoot that we're doing, you know, we kind of know what shots we have ahead of time, so we'll have cameras fitted with those lenses. But I do have other lenses in the bag. I, I it's one thing I I hate to change lenses out there on the salt water because you get the air and everything else right. when you even if you do it quickly you've got you got the air so you always got a little extra cleanup to do then, uh, but I do have lenses in the bag in case we start coming across something where where I need a longer lens or something like that and then uh, then I'll go ahead and um, and switch them out on the water but again it goes in you know for instance a, a month or two back I was shooting. Uh, a tournament down there uh, with a buddy of mine, Captain Mike Maul was boat guy running me around on that one. And we knew that we couldn't get close to the, to the participants, you know, because oh, okay. we spook and whatever. So we go out with our, you know, long lens, tripod, everything else. And so I had a short lens in case we happened to need something up. But by and large, we knew that day we we're gonna be shooting at a distance. So it was already rigged. Mm -hmm to shoot that way and most of the time if we're fishing particularly if we're fishing out of the boat i'm gonna have something with a wide angle lens i got you uh generally i'll shoot like a i have a 15 to 35 wide angle that i really like because it, it allows me to be close to the subject you know and still get get them in frame right so it it does vary sometimes but generally you're just kind of like when you're going fishing you kind of know what you're targeting the next day and that's what you're tying on your rods pretty much the same thing you get those lenses on the on the camera the night before and you're ready to go right the evolution of the camera right we i grew up knowing the camera where you know you push right. it over here for yeah. a little bit and it's ready to go you shoot you twist it again and it's ready to shoot again mm -hmm. and then the the gopro camera came out for all of us dudes that you know we we get dirty in the water or dirt bike guys mm -hmm. or just action, right? The action camera. Right? Has Canon or any of the other, what do you what do you call those point and shoot cameras? Oh yeah, there's. Uh, Is there like a GoPro bad to the bone? Uh, not, not necessarily a, a GoPro style. Which and I shoot GoPro as well. I have GoPros. Oh you do? Uh, yeah, I have GoPros as well. Uh, so GoPro and Canon would be the two brands. But there's a lot of point and shoot cameras. Some of them are even waterproof. Oh, okay. Um, that everybody, Olympus, Canon, everybody. Um, in there again, it's kind of like everything that's evolved with technology. Right. You know, a lot of these, even the most basic point and shoot camera today, allows people to capture photos that are far better quality than that what they could have with some right. top end equipment mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, there's there's cameras out there really for every budget, right, and every user level mm -hmm. of experience or aptitude. 
Right. Even the cell phones are getting pretty. Yeah, yeah pretty without a doubt. Either. And I shoot stuff on my phone too. Oh really? I mean, oh yeah, I'll sh I'll shoot with my when we're shooting. I'm shooting with several cameras, and I I always take a couple of my phone as well. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it lays it allows me to lay at an angle that that a big camera won't. Right. So yeah, without a doubt, the uh, the cell phones are are getting most of them are up high enough in pixels. Um, and Water power size, and that, yeah. Stuff. So yeah, no, without a doubt, you can get a lot done. And that's how a lot of people have have gotten to where they're taking the the shots, like you were asking, if they're fishing out of a boat. You know, kayak's a little different. You've you've kind of got to do what you've described and have your gear set. Right. Uh, but on the boat, a lot of them are just you know tilting it up, uh, kind of like you have your phone there and putting the timer on, and then if right. you do it in a selfie mode, they can see themselves in the pose. Yeah. Uh, ahead. Yeah, I think now that the new GoPros have a screen in front. Yeah, the new GoPros do the same thing. They have stuff. a screen, yeah, right. the nines. The only thing I've had a problem with GoPro, and hopefully GoPro's watching, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, I mean, who knows? They might be, right? Is battery life. You know, I have mine. I haven't upgraded my GoPros because I have an external battery that only fits that one. Mm -hmm. So I'll hit it. I'll hit the play, I'll hit the record button first thing in the morning. I can go all day. But if I upgrade to one of the newer ones, and correct me if I'm wrong, I will only get like two hours because I don't want to reach. Um, well, hit, what, I don't record. do I don't do a lot of uh, video, but I will say this: uh, the GoPro because I've had several series of GoPro. The GoPro Nine that I have currently mm -hmm. as my primary GoPro. The battery life is far shorter really than what it was on the earlier versions okay um even doing still shots even just resting so i end up having to pack extra which i generally pack extra batteries anyways mm -hmm. but i've had to pack extra extra batteries right uh now with this gopro because if we're on the water all day even if i'm not shooting with it I notice it drains. Uh huh. And okay, even if it's just sitting there. It's just already. sitting, yeah. So, okay. and then you start shooting. And so, whereas before my older GoPros, I could have them charged up, ready to go, and I may not use them for a week or two, and they're, they're always, their battery seem to always be full. But mm -hmm. the newer ones, I've noticed the battery life is shorter. Right. The, your, met, your camera of choice is a point and shoot camera? Or no, I use, well, I've been using DSLR bodies and I just switched to the uh, Canon mirrorless bodies. So I have okay. a couple of mirrorless, uh, basically it's, they don't have the mirror flapping around on the inside and okay. it shoots more technology wise, like a cell phone or a GoPro where I got it's you. seeing what it shoots. But, but, um, no, they're all, and they all have the option of shooting manually or automatic and various auto settings mm -hmm. and, and everything else. They'll, they'll shoot video as well, right? They will shoot video as well. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know they have external mics for them you know everything else so yeah and you will see a lot of uh these days a lot of the videographers will actually use some of those dslrs or those mirrorless bodies um with the different lenses for their videography mm -hmm. we had a couple of uh of guests come in from houston area san antonio area i want to say you're our first guest and i i hope i'm not wrong on this but from the lower Laguna side of stuff. All right. And one of the questions I'll I'll ask, and I hope I'm not wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Is how do you feel about the whole 2021 freeze? You know, we get a lot of heartburn about about wanting to keep fish, right? Well, you know what? Let's throw them all back. You know, how do you feel? How how bad do you think it got? You being on the water as much as you it, are. It was, well, one, it was a real, it happened, you know, right. and we did lose fish. There's no two ways about it, especially trout. Um, ironically, the snook seemed to have fared okay, and I think going back to Brian, he's been backing that up with some hellacious snook trips. Right. Uh, yeah, tarpon's not the only thing he's, he excels Yeah, no, the, the snook and tarpon, but the, but the snook, I really expected him to take a big hit, but they have seemed to have made it through okay. Trout definitely were hit um and now within the lower laguna madre i do think talking to guys seeing it it seems like maybe a little above us you know because we're at the very bottom of the lower laguna madre it seems like the damage was a more significant a little above us but the bottom line is the entire texas coast lost a lot of fish right 
Uh, we, of course, had the uh, temporary restrictions on limits throughout the summer and into September after they extended it. And now, of course, uh, Parks and Wildlife is doing scope and meetings proposing that they do those same restrictions, uh, really from Matagorda down, which that was one thing it did. It caught my eye a little bit that when, when they came out with their gillnet surveys that there were several bays that had lost a significantly higher amount of their trout that didn't have those restrictions. So not to say that we shouldn't have, because I think it benefited us to have them down there. Mm -hmm. But I, I like the idea that if they're going to do it, go ahead and do all of those affected bays. Um, and we've had good fishing. As I know they have, you know, I've experienced some good fishing up here as well, like I told you, in the upper Laguna and Baffin. And so all of these areas that were in that restricted zone, we've had good fishing this year. But, man, leading up to the 2021 free, it was phenomenal. It's really? Oh, the, the fishing before the freeze was just incredible from quality and quantity of fish. Um, it was easy to tell this year that the, the numbers of quality trout just weren't there. Still some really okay. big trout swimming around, mm -hmm. but the numbers of really, really solid keeper, keeper size trout really weren't there. So mm -hmm. um, I do understand why the regu restricted re the temporary restricted regulations were in place and um, where we're at now on the fish, it's probably a good thing they were there. And it'll be interesting to see if they do move forward with the um, with the implementing those changes uh -huh. if they do it's going to be for a period of a year oh really and, uh, oh. <laughs> the uh <laughs> so yeah and they have scoping meetings both here in corpus and in port isabel uh, next week on january 11th to get public input and stuff like that right um but it also seems like from when it first came about there was a lot more pushback people not understanding didn't agree with it now as they've come around to do it again i'm not hearing as much um, resistance to it. Mm -hmm. um, redfish seem to come through much better. Now they did seem to take a little bit of a hit after the freeze because the angling pressure kind of shifted to redfish from trout. Right. And we're still kind of in that COVID. Right, that's we true, had, right? Yeah, it, it, without a doubt. And, and believe it or not, during that latter part of the COVID thing, we had a lot more boat pressure during the week. Uh, than we did at any, you know, his. So everybody was like, "Man, we can't catch no trout. Let's go catch all the yeah. Let's go. Fish. Let's go catch reds." Right. And uh, and you know, the thing is, we all like to eat fish, and I understand that. But um, one of the big things is just you know understanding one, how many how many fish you really need to keep. Right. It, regardless of what the limit is. Um, because you know when you really get down to it, a limit of fish. That's a lot of fish to eat. Right. Um, keep what you need keep what you need the rest. exactly and so i don't think it needs to be black or white either keep a limit or release everything you know find a half a medium and and moderation based on what you actually are going to use mm -hmm. regardless of the limit right um and then something else we've been pushing is you know if you just really need that many fish to eat there's other species you can go after too right that, that it doesn't are, have to be trout it doesn't have to be trout there's other species that are good eating and plentiful right I wonder if, I wonder, I'm sure somebody has said that. I know there's meetings here in Corpus about it. You know, the, the new proposed regulations and stuff. I wonder if somebody has said, okay, you're going to take away some trout from us, but give us one more redfish. You know, instead of the three, right. let us keep four. You know, or for, for the guys that want to keep the fish, right? Right. And, and you know, there again, I think that's... Um that's where you also look to. I mean, you got black drumming, and one thing people don't don't think about a lot, but even you go to the surf, you got pompano, you got whiting, right. you got you know things like. Because you know, what we don't want to be. And I was talking to a, a magazine editor the other day about this, and he brought up a point. He said, you know, um, the last thing we want to do is get to be somewhere like Florida is, where you got closed seasons. Mm -hmm. And you know, really, that that makes sense. I mean, wouldn't you rather have, if in that looking at it in that light, right? Some limits instead of not catching them at all. Exactly. Yeah. You know, instead of having pure, you know, closed seasons, period, I, you know, giving up a trout or two. And again, that would still only be for a year just to try to help the, the resource rebound. Right. I feel like if they take them away, we're not going to get it back. You know, and I've heard you know, that comment catch a lot. 10 or something. Yeah, it used to be 10. Yeah, it used to um, be 10. And see, there too, we were kind of at the. When it went to five, the first place it went to five was the lower Laguna Madre. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was from where I'm at then out to the southern tip of it, there mm -hmm. at the Brownsville Ship Channel, all the way up to 
uh, the land, the southern end of the land cut. So the lower Laguna Madre was the only bay that had the five fish restricted uh, limit to begin with. And then they ultimately implemented it, you know, throughout. Right. Um, and I remember going through those scoping meetings and all the resistance, you know, at that time. Uh, but, you know, Ram, at that time, you know, I was guiding full time and it was a struggle to catch yeah. the 10 fish limit. Yeah. It was a lot of days it was a struggle to catch a five fish, you know, keeper size trout. Mm -hmm. uh, so I looked at it as if we're not catching 10 keepers on our, what are they really taking away? Right. You know, uh, and I think without a doubt, when they did that, our fishery improved. Now, I'm not saying that we got to keep taking and taking and taking. Right. You know, there's got to be a balance, obviously. Um, but that was a regulation change that, without a doubt, impacted our, our fishery for the better. And I think we were really seeing the results of that leading up to the freeze last year because we had phenomenal trout fishing. Uh, better than I'd seen since of 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think we're seeing that now because had they had those populations not built to that level, we may not have been able to sustain a population following that freeze event. Right. You know, I think yeah. that we had such healthy populations. That's what allowed it was us to, working. to weather Whatever the, it did, the freeze. Whatever they did was working. I believe so, yeah. Right. Cool. So once we, before we end the show, we got two more questions to ask you. All right. But before that, for the viewers that are still on and they're just hanging out all cozy, you know, we had a pretty decent cold front come in. I think yep. it was last week. Yep. You know, y'all have y'all's blankets out and y'all are like, man, you know what? I don't want to watch TV right now. Spool Life Live is on. Put it on the big screen and let's kick back because other than Dana Wise is on, right? Dana Wise brought us something. He's a writer as well, right? right? He got us some books. He's got this book, Coastal Fly Fishing Quick Start Guide. That's one of his books. He also has Dana Wise's Tips for Fishing the Texas Coast for the readers out there. But fishing, he also has fishing for photographs. And these are some of his top photographs All right that's that's just a collection of photography in the year of that just came out in 2021 okay perfect so yeah. that was last year that was last year some of his best pictures and some pretty good pictures i'm not going to show them because this is going to be i'm going to show you one that uh that i see here is we're going to show it because brian barrett is on it right some pretty good pictures snook tarpon one winner is going to win it but that's not it that's not it guys you know here on spool live we do whatever we want so we're here we're also gonna throw in i say we mr wise is also gonna throw in a box of his favorite lures from doa it's your favorite right yeah without a doubt that's one of the what best I'm using most one of the, the best one, one of the companies that's been around for years right. too right in this box we got their staple lure yeah right? that's the original lure right right there that's their shrimp was with. one of the i'm assuming one of the first ones that was created by mr nichols yeah. right this one is called the bait buster bait buster we got their version of a soft plastic top water right pretty cool little bait and the air yep. chest, yeah yeah formerly known as airhead they call airhead. it a swim bait now but yeah that's uh and that's, that's one that you'll see too. uh Joey throwing up here a lot. Here in Corpus. Yep. And this is the just their jerk baits got both sides of the jerk baits in there. Jerk right, Chad. When I I've noticed these baits, most of them aren't cut on the tail. Correct. Is that for a reason? Well, it, it makes it a little more versatile because you can, if you want to pull them apart, right, pop it apart. If you want to trim it short, trim it right there at the elbow. Right. Or you can leave it in there and it gives a little more of a paddle action. Because I've seen that on some of these where you'll cut a slip right, right here. Right, you cut right. a slip right there, exactly. Yeah, I've seen some of some people do that. But nonetheless, this is going to go to one person tuning in right now. Some cool glow in the dark, some cool uh, chartreuse tails. A pretty cool little box. First person. You're going to get this box. You're going to get these books. First person to tell me. Mr. Wise's camera of choice. 
Mr. Beardsley, they do they do real repairs here. First person to tell me Mr. Wise's camera of choice. We mentioned it a couple times. Austin Matthews. You man, Cliff Nagel, you your uh your internet is just not as fast. Well, hold on, who who got it? I'm seeing Cliff Nagel up in the front, right? It was Austin Matthews, now it's Cliff Nagel in the front. Right? Looks like my I mean, hair, yeah. Cliff Nagel. I'm not sure how that happened, but <laughs> maybe maybe it readjusted on time or, or something, but Cliff Nagel, you are the winner, man. I'm going to screenshot this. Cliff Nagel, and correct me if I'm wrong, send me a screenshot, Mr. Matthews, if you are up in front. But on this screen right here, Cliff spelled it right. Oh, is that true? C-A-N-O-N? That's correct. All right, Cliff Nagel, you're the winner, man. <laughs> you're the winner of the Mr. Wise books and DOA tackle tackle bin. One more question. We're, 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 we've already gone over time, but one more question. As a guide, right, and as affiliated through the DOA guys how do you feel about the whole pro staff name i know when you first started right years ago not that i'm saying you're yes say years and years right. ago in my case right. right there wasn't much of the of the media presence facebook was i'm, I'm sure it was around my no, no 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 <laughs> So not, not, not no, all, no, no, right? we're talking 95. Do we didn't have the computers in? Okay, well, that even still. makes it even more greater of a, of a question. The pro staff name, I feel, right, affiliated with, with some of the best companies, top companies on the water. I feel like the, the name pro staff has been stretched out so far that, eh, you're pro staff, okay, right? How do you feel about the whole media presence of the of the term pro staff uh, yeah i think pro staff is way overused um and especially on social media you'll see people listing dozens of pro staff affiliations and, and you know it, at least again going back to the way i've always viewed it the way it was always kind of instructed to me because i'm you know i didn't I came into this and had mentors that helped show me the path and have been lucky to be affiliated with some good companies and, and associate myself with, with really good anglers and guides. Um, you know, number one, the pro staff, regardless of what you call it, should be a relationship. Right. And it should be a two-way relationship. You know, there's a benefit to the company that you're representing mm -hmm. as well angler. as right to what you're getting. So it's not just all about what comes to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an obligation and how you re represent them and what you do for them. Right. Um, and the people that are truly pro staff, you'll see that. Whether they're working shows for, for companies, uh, simple as simple as, you know, I've seen some of the better guides. They're just killing time waiting on their clients at the dock so they go hand out a couple of lures. Right. You know, tell them about them. They're not obligated to. That's coming out of the stash they got as their pro staff deal. Right. Um, and then, you know, realize that just because somebody sent you product doesn't mean you're actually pro staff. So that's one thing. Every time I see pro staff, pro staff, pro staff, are you really a pro staff or did you just get some product from right. once? Yeah. You know, because that alone doesn't incorporate pro staff. So I, I, I think it's been um, diluted to the point that it it does it's not really meaningful to me i don't even ask people if you're pro staff anymore at that point right you know i just you can tell who is truly pro staff by the way they represent right. the products that they're associated with exactly uh so at least you know i'm sure that's not going to make a lot of people happy but um i really think that the the word's overused and i think a lot of times the relationship isn't built and it's not sustained. That's the other thing I, I don't like seeing. And the, the few people have asked for my advice, which, you know, got to question their judgment too. But, you know, the main thing is, you know, stay with whoever you're with. 
yeah. you know, and, and it's it's, it's that, that simple. simple to, you'll see some of these notorious pro staffers jumping from company to company to company to company, you know, like chasing a new shiny toy. And right. it's, it's, again, it's, the whole purpose of this is it's a two-way mutually beneficial relationship, which, you know, should be long-term and long-lasting, mm -hmm. not just what can you, who can do what for me today. Right. I feel like with media now, especially with, with, with Facebook, Instagram, you know, growing up, our parents used to tell us, man, you could be anything you want when you grow up, right? Right. There was no internet back then, right? There was some when I was growing up, but I think we had the Nokia phones, but there was no internet. You couldn't jump on the internet on your cell phone. And we had to we had to wait till we grew up to be somebody, right? You know, now with media, you could be anybody the hell you could you could be anybody you want. You, you know? can give the appearance of being yeah, who exactly. you want. That's yeah. a big difference, yeah. though, Ram, between being who you want and being yeah, who you, you know, are in real life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's a that's crazy. And, and so I think that's a big difference as well. Right. Um, is you know, and, and and I think that's one of the dangers two on either side and i think that that's one of the things that's uh, something that the the manufacturing tackle companies have to wade through is determining who is actually who they present themselves to be um yeah, but over time those things generally come to light right that's my experience yeah you know it, it's hard to hold a facade for too long yeah, exactly. so eventually it'll be exposed and so i don't really concern myself with it i go about my business but i do um, see the proliferation of that use of that word with association with companies. And like I said, many times, I don't even know if the company knows. Yeah, exactly. That I feel like, it, okay, we'll give him a 10% discount. and That does not amount to make you to the side. Side. Yeah, well, okay, we'll go to the website, get anything you want, use this code. Right. Right. So, again, that's, you go know, say guess, our name right. to everybody. You right. Know, so, know. that that's it. it so, the the usage of that has evolved quite a bit right uh to where it's kind of devalued it to mm -hmm. some extent right uh but like i said there are still good anglers good writers good photographers good guides that do a hell of a job for their sponsors mm -hmm. regardless of what you call them yeah a and those are the people that you want to associate with right if we skipped your question which i don't think so i see a question from from matthews we're already out of time and everybody at the fly shop is giving me dirty looks. You know what I mean? They want to get out of here or they want to come clean up here and stuff. So if we skipped your question, if, if we didn't get to your question myself, if it was a question for me, a question for Mr. Wise, we will go back and uh, answer that accordingly, right? I want to give a shout out to everybody that tuned in for the first show of 2022. I want to give a shout out to, first I want Mr. Wise to give a shout out to his affiliated companies. Well, right. I mean, there's a, as far as what I affiliated with, you know, I, I wear Laguna Madre clothing, this fish Waterloo rods, uh -huh. DOA lures, good stuff. Bradco, the good stuff, you know. Um, but then the guys, you know, that we talked about, you know, right. Captain Brian Bedetta, Joey Feta, um, Mike Mall down there. There's just there's too many to name, really. You right. Know? Um, but over time, everybody that um, that I've worked with really appreciate it. And everybody all, that's all probably in done. this photography book. Oh yeah, right. without a doubt. Uh, there's everybody that that has supported me, and then I try to reciprocate and help them out as I can as well. Right. Good people down south, and uh, if y'all are men, if y'all haven't seen. Mr. Wise's photography, go look on his Instagram, Dana Wise. Yeah, just at Dana Wise. Dana, Facebook too, Dana Facebook Wise as Wise, well. Exactly. Some epic photos. I'm not sure if y'all want to get into the photography stuff. I mean, everybody's got a GoPro stuck on their kayaks or, or their boats now. So check that out. Brian Barreto, of course, we'll throw a shout out to Brian Barreto. We're probably one of the best, if not the best, in the Lower Laguna for catching tarpon and uh, and snook my sponsors roy's bait and tackle we're here every other week in the beautiful roy's bait and tackle studio real sportswear and carbock brewery but one more person i want y'all to go look at is redfish woodworks he's making these pretty cool fat boy 
You could put a you could put a top water of your choice up there. This one, this is the business card version. You know, for everybody that's got the office, if you have a dad that's got an office, grandfather that's got an office, or even if you got a trophy room, this would look pretty cool in the trophy room. Give that dude a shout, a shout, and he'll set you up with your lure of choice, right? Some people say, man, why don't you have like a busted up lure up there or, you know, a lure that you've actually caught some fish on. Well, you know, I have this brand new lure because here it's full life. We do whatever the hell we want, right? So we got this one. It looks a lot nicer anyways. Maybe a lure broken in half or something, right? What else we got? What else are we missing? We've already thrown a shout out to the sponsors, affiliated sponsors. Thank you so much, Mr. Wise. For making Enjoy the trip it. over here not a problem i hope it was, it was knowledgeable for everyone that uh cruised into the show also y'all want to take some photos with mr wise right we yep. give you a shout yeah they can, something happen. Happen. they can reach out to me uh through my instagram or facebook or just danawise at gmail.com uh and i do those trips as well i do uh do commission shoots where i jump on your boat with you Oh, really? Just like any photographer where you hire him for yeah. a photo session, I'll get on the boat and do the photo session with you on the water. So, Are, are you, uh, I know we're already in deep, but do you, I don't even know if this was a question, but do you just do outdoor stuff? Or if somebody's having like a party or something? I'll, I'll shoot stuff. Um, you know, I've shot a variety of different things, but really and truly, you know, I know my limits and, and right. who's better at what. And then there's some photographers that are much better at certain things than I am. And, mm -hmm. and so when I have people reach out um, that want me to do something that I know somebody else can do a better job at, I just pass them along. Right. Uh, but when it comes to the fishing photography, again, that's, that is something that, that I do that's a little more unique is that, um, like I said, if you, you hire a, a photographer, they're going to charge you by the hour to go to your birthday party. Well, I do the same thing on the water. Okay. Uh, if you want professional looking shots of you out on for a day on the water, uh, yeah, reach out and that's right. one of the things I do. Hell yeah, man. So if y'all are, y'all heard it here from the source, cruise into the media pages and schedule something. If you want those epic pictures on your social media pages, thank you all for tuning in. And we will see y'all on the next show. The flyer goes out tomorrow night, I believe. Depending on how the Cowboys do tonight, right? <laughs> the flyer will go out tomorrow night. We're hitting 2022 realer, liver, and rawer. I know those aren't words <laughs> coming from, from a teacher, right? But uh, we got some big stuff coming up. So y'all tune in on that. And I hope y'all are enjoying it. We'll see y'all on the next time.